What's going on everybody, it's Frito here for your Overwatch, taking another look at pro team comps today. This time, the pros are finally playing the patch that we're on. And boy, have the effects been noticeable. Kick the tires and light the fires, the Junkrat meta is here. In future videos, I'm gonna break down more specific the skill set of Junkrat in the new pro meta. And yes, it does take skill, you better believe it. I mean, just look at this three-point shot from Buds, knocking it into the doorway from the half-court line. It's possible to be quite accurate with Junkrat to a scary degree. But getting down to business here, we're gonna take a look at Rogue's undiveable team comp. Max crowd control coming from the Frenchman on defense. Kungarna gets absolutely stumped about how to engage this comp. This can give you a little bit of relief when you're struggling to get through the choke, to know that sometimes even pro players don't really know how to go about dealing with these situations themselves. After all, we're all learning the game, especially when a new patch goes live. And Kungarna got thrown into the deep end against this team comp that I'm dubbing the Full Junker Town. Because it utilizes the spatial control of both Roadhog and his best buddy Junkrat. The argument that Roadhog isn't good enough basically all surrounds upon his inability to deal enough damage himself, but... When you have the mind from Junkrat and the reliable shots as well as crowd control from McCree, whatever you hook in can get Junkrat trapped, it can get flashed, and obviously followed up on with all the damage that your team has. It's this type of team comp that I think really shows the weakness that Soldier can have on attack especially. On maps like Volskaya, for instance, where as long as you get past the choke, there's likely going to be high ground for you to utilize as Soldier to take a massive advantage. But going through these small chokes, like Eichenwald and Hanamura, you're gambling that you're going to be able to win the shield battle, which is nearly impossible against the damage output of the full Junkertown comp, because having Roadhog in the off-tank position means that you almost always are guaranteed to win the shield break war. Yes, his ability to burst damage went down, but his shield break didn't change at all, really. Now, I did make a video about breaking this exact choke, on how I would do it in matchmaking. The Zarya Diva combination is actually incredibly good at breaking this because Reinhardt's barrier can't recharge in between the bursts of damage coming in. And what that means is, if one of your teammates gets hooked, you can fly towards them as Diva to save them, and you can actively catch important nades from the Junkrat that are going to be coming in. Whereas Reinhardt has yeah, a big shield, but it doesn't last for very long at all, so pushing into this choke means that by the time you're just a few feet in, making progress, the shield's gonna be gone. It's like running this Reinhardt into a Bastion setup, basically, and trying to take it headlong into a comp that has far better shield break than you're going to be able to muster. The Zarya is nice because it gets her charged up, but if you can't get that Zarya into position, it doesn't neatly counter Junkrat and Roadhog because they can play out of her range. Zarya is only scary when you get her into that medium to close range where she's hitting her shots. Up until then, your team is just dying to hooks and spam and all sorts of other nonsense. Now there's two ultimate fights that I want to break down how they panned out between these two comps. One Rogue wins and the other Rogue loses and eventually does lose first point. If the full Junker Town comp has a weakness, I would say that it is in the ultimate fight because Roadhog's ult is a little bit more niche in applicability. Also because you're only running with one defensive support ultimate, you're prone to lose on coordinated ult fights. Uncle's obviously a very good Ana, but I wonder if they would just double down on this strategy with a mercy pick in that slot actually, giving damage amp to any of the three major damage dealers, Roadhog, McCree, or Junkrat to even amplify and double down on the ranged shield break, spam choke strategy, and also getting a support ultimate. You're gonna lose some crowd control without having sleep dart and some burst healing, but I don't think you need it because you have so much other crowd control tools in the rest of the team comp. Okay, onto the ult fights. After a few failed pushes, Kungarna finally gets their sound barrier, which is going to be their opening to break through this choke without dying instantly. The only problem is when Cory pops tack visor, He's got the big Rhine shield in his way. And the interesting thing about Roadhog now is that he's not so afraid to face tank an ultimate anyway. You could say that D.Va's ability to eat defense matrix is stronger, but much like Winston with Primal Rage, Roadhog can kind of just absorb with his fat belly an ultimate from this angle anyway. Now that doesn't come into effect here, 
But even if they did break the shield, Roadhog could help as a distraction absorption tool, much like you would with Primal Rage. And once Kungarna popped the hammer down, Nico knew it was a pretty good time to pop the whole hog, which they used Nano Boost to amp up. Now this looks flashy and really cool. And with the ranged healing from Ana, obviously Roadhog gets a lot stronger. And that's something that Mercy couldn't do, but I think the Mercy pick might be able to save them from what eventually does get them to lose this point later on, which is having a weaker ult fight. Oh, and side note, Michael sees the entirety of Rogue clumped up, and he thinks he's gonna be able to slash all of them and clean up the kills. Well, guess what? Hook, Flashbang, and Junkrat Mine all are incredibly good at hitting the Genji Blade. I don't think you can run Genji against this at all. At least not without a big support ult combination to sound barrier and nano boost him so he can survive to even close the distance to do that damage. This comp is really scary to fight. So with 45 seconds left on the board, Kungarna have a few ultimates to work with, Bishu having the Graviton, and I think he kind of outsmarts him here by popping out of the little doorway. And although Wind Sound Barrier is expertly timed to be able to deny the damage from the charge coming from Remix, Kungarna is able to respond with their own Sound Barrier. And although Whole Hog does crowd control some of the enemy ultimates, including Nano Boost, the Hog kind of gets styled on here and doesn't get as much value as you would out of another ultimate, probably. But not to be deterred, Rogue is on a mission to reclaim their top spot in NA. They've had a very disappointing Contenders Season 1 thus far. Due to travel implications, having to play on laptops from hotel rooms, I don't know the story exactly. But less than ideal circumstances have caused them to play far below their standard of play, and it looks like this new Junkrat Roadhog patch is breathing new life into Rogue to play in the aggressive, confident way that made them go on an undefeated streak for so long. They engage with the Rip Tire, use it to get kills and create space for the rest of Rogue to pursue in on this spawn trap, and although they do swap off the Roadhog here, and they're running mostly dive with Junkrat, they use the ranged Junkrat spam to zone and waste a ton of time from Kungarna. Remember, on defense, your goal is to delay the cart more than anything, really. Winning team fights is great, holding the map is great, but if you just delay the cart more, then they're going to be able to delay the cart when you are on attack, you will win, and that's Rogue's general strategy towards payload and what has been so successful for them for a long time, prior to Contender Season 1. If you relentlessly play the objective and survive for a long time on the cart, whether you win or lose the fight almost doesn't matter. But on top of that, they're so mechanically good that they often do win fights, even from those situations. But Kungarna is able to get the opening pick and use ultimates to escape their spawn. But at this point, they're going into overtime with Streets Phase just opening. The entirety of the extra time that was given for taking first was utterly chewed through with that strategy, and Rogue re-engage, Riptire getting the opening frag again. Nico wins the Genji Blade duel against the Sights, mostly because Soldier has to play a little bit too close for comfort to the cart, and Rogue's gonna clean up this cart and as well clean up this match with fairly easily taking first and this minor push on second. Overall, guys, I think it's a big mistake to play Soldier against a Junkrat. Junkrat is so good at spamming a location where you have to be standing in order to do any damage, and he does even more damage. To the same degree that I think a lot of matchmaking players have learned that you can't simply just hold a position as Soldier against Farah, who's spamming free damage from miles away, the same thing goes for Junkrat, but even more because he shoots faster. Soldier is not the de facto shield break death ball style character that he was before, and I think pro teams are going to start to realize that if you don't have the ground, Soldier is not very good. And Kungarna kept having to have their Soldier either behind a choke or having to play too close to the cart. Soldier needs his space to be any good at all, or this type of team comp is just going to spam him to death, and he's never going to find the nice clean angles he needs to deal his damage. Very interesting team comp, guys, and I hope you did enjoy the video. This new pro meta has a lot of exciting styles of play for our viewing pleasure. Contender Season 1 is about to sure up with its final week coming this weekend, and then we're on into playoffs, and after the playoffs, then Overwatch League is coming, so we're actually getting into the full swing of Overwatch as an eSport very soon. If you like these videos breaking down pro team comps and styles of play, please leave a like. It really does let us know that you enjoyed the content. I, of course, enjoy making it. 
but if you wanna keep seeing it, keep liking it. Just another reminder, we are doing an Overwatch Razor Death Adder Elite giveaway, giving away three of those bad boys. It's the mouse I use when I play Overwatch, and you can enter that giveaway linked in the description. If you haven't already, please subscribe because we upload each and every day, so you're gonna wanna hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. That's been it for me, I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.